I got to prepare, so I'm preparing. I'm just country boy, so I'm not that smart. And he's that preacher, he's a smart man, wear these nice suits. So I'm preparing, I'm just country boy, you know, I'm not that smart. And he's that preacher, he's a smart man, wear these nice suits. So he's going to show up and embarrass me at the debate October the 14th. And I'm just waiting, you know, I show up and I'm going to do my best. I'm going to do my best. Herschel Walker is the saddest Senate candidate I've ever seen. He's an unqualified lying buffoon, and he's got a 50-50 chance of winning in Georgia. It's important to vote. You know, if you don't vote, we could wind up with a Senator Herschel Walker, okay? <laughs> Last week, the Republican U.S. Senate candidate from Georgia sent out what might be the saddest tweet in the history of American politics. It's emblematic of a campaign that is among the saddest in political history. While criticizing and lying about his opponent, incumbent Democratic Senator Raphael Warnock, for calling law enforcement thugs and bullies, Walker tweeted that he was proud to serve the Blue as an honorary agent and special deputy sheriff of Cobb County for many years. Attached to the tweet was a picture featuring Walker's certification as a special deputy sheriff. It looked very much like a designation that law enforcement might hand out to kindergarten children after a school tour of the department. Or as one member of Congress put it, my son got a Paw Patrol badge. Think that gives you the same authority. Look closely at this thing. No doubt it was made at Kinko's. <laughs> I don't even know what to say, bro. Last June, the Atlanta Journal-Constitution wrote about Walker's tendency for exaggeration when it comes to his alleged law enforcement background and quoted a former DeKalb County District Attorney, pointing out that an honorary deputy is like a junior ranger badge. <laughs> this isn't Walker's first mistruth about his law enforcement background. In 2017, Walker claimed, I've been in criminal justice all my life. In 2013, he said, I spent time at Quantico at the FBI training school. Y'all didn't know I was an agent? None of these statements are true. Repeatedly, news outlets have pointed out Walker's tendency for exaggeration, and yet that didn't stop him from repeating the lie again and exposing himself to even more ridicule. One of the things I learned that is very interesting, this port and, uh, is generated, the second largest generator in the country of money, and yet we wanted to hire 87,000 IRS agents. And I'm going, wait a minute. If they're generating revenue, second largest generator in the country is here, do you not think we ought to take maybe 4,000 of those IRS agents and put them here on the port? That still leaves them 83,000. I can count, 83,000. And then maybe we should take maybe 3,000 and put them in the school because that's what, about 3,500 public school, put one of them in each school of uh, police officer. And that's still leaving, what, 80,000. And maybe we should start trying to put resources that can solve problems rather than things that's going to go after people of uh, lower income. The thing I'm going to talk about is continuing this border. What I want to talk about is the revenue in, uh, generating. You know, that's very, very important. Right now, this economy is terrible. Everyone know that. And they had a party saying they're having a party about the, this economy getting better. The economy not getting better. That is a lie. And they had a part of it about it. Well, I'm going to talk about what this port generates and how we got to put money maybe into this port, how we got to put money into other things. You know, and I see that and hire people, get people motivated to hire people to come and work. People got to go to work. And, you know, able-bodied people need to go to work. That's one thing that was great about this country. Everyone have the right to work if they're able-bodied to work. Walker's campaign is increasingly a train wreck, but one that emits sadness and wonderment. Not only because those closest to Walker aren't stepping in to rescue him, but because he has a 50-50 chance of actually getting elected. Well, that's disappointing. Walker is a lousy candidate who is manifestly unqualified for the job he's seeking. Hello there! Let me hear Herschel Walker! Come on! Get it up! Come on, Herschel! Hi! I want to mention my Lord Jesus Christ, and let me tell you guys something. I'm sick and tired. I'm sick and tired of people putting this country down. And I think you ought to be sick and tired of that as well. And it is time for us to stand up and tell everyone this is the best country in the world, and we got to get ready to fight for it, and I'm going to fight with it. You know, every time I go out to speak, everybody want a sound bike. I'm going to give you a sound bike really quick. You know, I'm a man of God, and I'm going to tell you right now, we got to do what's right. What is right is I've heard it many times that there's peace through strength. 
Well, right now we're giving up our strength because we forgot to support our military. And it's time for us to start supporting our military, putting money behind our military so they can go to war when they need to go to war and they're going to be victorious whenever they go and know that we're behind them. And the next thing we got to do, people, we got to support our men and women in blue. We need all our men and women in blue to continue to do the great job they've been doing for this country. People want to ask me all the time why I'm running. I'm sick and tired. I'm sick and tired of them want to teach CTR in, in school, critical race theory. Can you tell me what that means? Before announcing his candidacy last year, he never evinced any interest in public policy or government service. The only reason he's even in the running for a Senate seat is that he was a star running back at the University of Georgia and won the Heisman Trophy four decades ago. The last time Walker was relevant, the Soviet Union was still going strong. Boom! That's it, baby! Of course, there's also the fact that Donald Trump endorsed him for the job. Walker isn't simply clueless about the issues he would have to tackle were he to be elected. He holds childlike views and struggles to communicate in even a semi-coherent manner. Over the summer, for example, he criticized the Green New Deal by telling supporters that it was a policy ripoff. Why? According to Walker, America has some of the cleanest air in the world. That's not actually true. But since we don't control the air, our good air decided to float over to China's bad air. So when China gets our good air, their bad air got sick to move. So it moves over to our good air space. Walker's solution? We got to clean that back up. Since we don't control the air, our good air decided to float over to China, bad air. <laughs> so when China gets our good air, their bad air got to move. <laughs> so it moves over to our good air space. And now we got to clean that back up. This is not how air works. In his public events, Walker either regurgitates the same four or five talking points about the evils of Democrats, or he goes off on often incoherent tangents. This is the saddest Senate candidate ever. I'm not that smart. 